Well, good afternoon. It's a uh, pleasure to be uh, speaking with you today. Uh, my name is Dr. Robert Steele. I serve as the uh, chair of the Department of Computer Science at uh, Capital Technology University. Um, and I'm going to speak about the jobs boom in artificial intelligence. So uh, hopefully this talk will help to explain uh, almost like a paradoxical area. Uh, we see uh, a discussion of, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence as uh, uh, replacing uh, jobs uh, opportunities. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, quite the opposite is true. Uh, in fact, there is a, a very strong uh, jobs boom in this field, uh, maybe the, the strongest jobs boom now uh, in the US economy and over the, over the coming few years. Uh, and it's also a source of incredible um, entrepreneurial activity and innovative uh, activity. So I'll talk specifically on that and how uh, you know, young people and uh, those who are uh, midway through their career and, and uh, others who are interested in these career opportunities uh, can best prepare themselves for, this, uh, for these opportunities. So first of all, I'll talk about the career pathways in general. What does it mean to, to work in this field? What would be the job titles? Um, and we'll uh, overview those subsequent sections from there and just give a little bit of an introduction of what all of these terms mean for those who are, who are not as familiar with them. So we start here with you know, a list of some of the uh, most well-known uh, jobs titles associated with this industry. Interestingly, they're not necessarily household names. If you're a, a high school student, you may not have heard of all of these uh, uh, career pathways, but uh, they are extremely significant at this time. Um, and uh, the more bright young people and the more bright career changes uh, that we can flow into these fields, uh, in many ways, the better for everybody. So machine learning engineer, uh, this is somebody who is able to uh, you know, marshal the technical skills involved uh, in machine learning and artificial intelligence and apply it to a given uh, you know, industry problem. Those industries could be any industry. They can be finance, health, government, defense, uh, literally anything. Uh, and all of these fields, uh, you know, transportation, such things as autonomous vehicles, all of these, all of these sectors are in, uh, in the uh, process of being transformed um, by these technologies. Uh, data scientists may be a career pathway uh, that you have heard of. Um, it's maybe a little bit more of a mainstream term. Uh, it's been ranked as the uh, number one job in the US over the last uh, four years by, by Forbes. Uh, it is also very well remunerated. Uh, a third career path or job title, computer vision engineer. Again, this one is, uh, you know, this is not a, a household name, I, I, would, I would suggest, but it's, uh, it's again, uh, intimately linked with a knowledge of machine learning, uh, particularly certain types of machine learning such as deep learning uh, applied to image processing. Um, and uh, you know, it has applications into health, it has applications into autonomous vehicles, uh, it has applications into security and many, many others. Um, uh, semiconductor engineer, there is a interesting intersection here between uh, new types of processing hardware and these types of computing capabilities. Um, for those who are slightly more, uh, you know, hardware oriented, there's also great career opportunities in relation to this. Uh, a data engineer, another title that may not be known to to all those who are, who are starting out in their education or are considering their career options, but this is in a very significant role. Um, there were some article some uh, commentary suggesting that the need for data engineers currently far exceeds the need for data scientists. So what is a data engineer? You know, a data engineer, uh, let me explain it this way, machine learning uh, requires first you to have uh, large uh, and relevant data sets. Um, 
and to bring those data sets together, to marshal and integrate the data, turns out to be a, a significant undertaking in itself. So a data engineer is somebody who is able to uh, manage and manipulate uh, data at scale. Uh, it's kind of a feed into the activities of data scientists and machine learning engineers. Um, there is a great demand for it. Uh, an enterprise architect, uh, maybe at, maybe at a career pathway you've heard, but all of these uh, all of these pathways you can see are very well remunerated, uh, either ranked you know the best jobs in the country by various uh, you know leading uh, career listing aggregators such as you know Glassdoor or Indeed, uh, but maybe even more importantly. Um, it is, it is activities in these areas that uh, are going to really transform uh, you know, many of our industries, drive a lot of uh, entrepreneurial activity for young people um, coming into these fields. So having described what might be uh, a you know, great goal for those uh, wishing to uh, establish it, to create, to head towards, let me just give a little bit of a kind of a, a five minute introduction to what all these words mean. Um, the one you have no doubt heard is artificial intelligence. It gets a lot of mainstream attention um, and, you know, I think probably in an ambivalent way. You know, the question is, is it good? Is it bad? Is it dangerous? Um, so, you know, the, the, the reality is a little bit, um, uh, I think a little bit more sophisticated than that. So. These are terms you've probably heard, including data mining. This is l literally how the, the fields relate to each other, to give a very, very quick two to five minute uh, you know, overview of the space. So it, it all uh, emerges from the field of computer science. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, only around uh, less than 70 years old and it's had a, a pretty significant impact shortly after uh, the formation of, of the computer science uh, field uh, the field of artificial intelligence was was born um, various uh, views of this would have it emerging or being first used as a term in 1956 what is artificial intelligence it is of course the um, emulation or replication of human level intelligence via a machine, via a computer, via a digital computer. So it's a very big goal. Uh, once this was undertaken, it was found to be very, very challenging uh, and maybe too challenging for any researchers to resolve. Um, it then split into a whole lot of subfields, okay? Trying to literally try to tackle each of these aspects of human intelligence as a separate problem. Okay, so machine learning is uh, was is, is literally the the effort to emulate the cognitive activity of a human, the, literally the brain and uh, and the thinking processes and the the other uh, mental capabilities that a person has. Computer vision uh, aimed at replicating a human's ability to. Um, process what they what they see to recognize uh, another person to recognize an object to recognize a threat um, to uh, align their physical activities as they move about their the day-to-day -day activity so it's um it became a separate subfield natural language processing what that means is uh, that is the field of artificial intelligence that focused on understanding human spoken or written language okay so uh, being able to understand uh, written English or written Spanish. Uh, this is the domain of natural language processing and to some extent has been tackled as a separate field. Uh, information retrieval is another one about um, retrieving information from, from a large store. It is, the, uh, it is kind of the formative field for for search engines and text mining is, uh, is uh, kind of an intersectional area coming out of that um, and uh, you know, a, a separate area from artificial intelligence is that of management of data uh, commonly involving databases um, how do we actually store you know these this uh, large quantities of data 
uh, and that, as I've said before, relates to, to, uh, to data engineers. So uh, it turns out of all of those sub-areas of, of uh, artificial intelligence there, the predominant one, the one that's becoming most significant, is machine learning. And the machine learning, the way that machine learning tackles problems is coming to overtake the way these other problems are, are um, addressed. Okay, so computer vision or natural language processing is now being tackled via machine learning tools. So there's a little bit of an academic overview. So um, that's what all of these terms mean. So this is a kind of an interesting overview picture here. Um, interestingly, 10 of the largest market capitalization companies um, as of recent times and, and currently are computer science based companies. So what that indicates is that the, you know, the massive impact of, of computer science are onto industry and onto how many of our systems work. Um, and what I want to explain here is that we're currently going through a, um, a boom at the moment which I would say is going to be of a similar um, impact as, as the internet, okay, which is, uh, is a pretty big impact. So if you look at this set of companies here, many of these um, arose uh, directly as a result of the internet. Um, certainly Amazon, Google, Facebook, and these last two here, um, you know, Apple and Microsoft predated the internet. Um, so in relation to artificial intelligence at the moment, we are going to have um, uh, you know, kind of a, a sector changing um, wave that's something in that order. We can't predict exactly how that's going to play out. Um, some commentators have observed that artificial intelligence um, is uh, classified as a general purpose technology, only uh, one of 24 in history, along with the wheel, the steam engine, the electricity, and internet, uh, by general purpose technology, that means a technology that uh, will have an impact across all sectors and not just one application area. And that is an interesting point about artificial intelligence techniques, machine learning techniques, so they can be applied um, into any problem domain as long as we have data. Uh, and that's uh, that is kind of the reason that uh, the impact will be will be quite significant. Um, specifically within you know the Washington D.C. area, uh, there's a very uh, a very uh, rosy outlook and and a very high need for this talent uh, pool, a talent pool that's relatively lacking given given this need. Um, as many may know, Amazon's second headquarters or HQ2 is to be. Uh, started in Washington or has been started. Um, this will be a, a massive employer. Um, the Department of Defense uh, has a significant initiative called the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. Um, this is looking at how artificial intelligence uh, impacts um, military operations and how it can be applied to military and security uh, applications. Um, obviously a very sensitive topic, uh, a critical topic, it, it potentially transformational, and there is uh, many uh, billions of dollars uh, that has been assigned to that particular problem. Uh, similarly, uh, other very significant employers uh, that are looking for this rare artificial intelligence talent uh, include uh, you know, the NSA and other associated uh, security agencies, um, Capital One, other finance uh, organizations, uh, NASA, Goddard, and this is just um, some of the kind of uh, well-known and larger organizations. Um, the many companies, uh, large and mid-sized, are going to be looking at, um, are going to be needing this skill set, and also um, it's going to provide the opportunity for a lot of startup and entrepreneurial activity. So, uh, you know, there will be a need for more and more training of, of the young people with these skills. So uh, I pose a quick rhetorical question, how long will all of this last? Um, 
you know, we can expect that the uh, transformations and, and, and the rollout of, of, and the innovations in this area will, uh, flowing from the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence, will be, uh, you know, we could estimate it's not going to be short term because it can be applied to all, all industries and all um, large stores of data, which are growing at an exponential rate uh, to have more data available continuously. So we are talking about um, you know, at least one to two decades. Uh, depending on how significant the innovations are, it may be even more far-reaching than that. So um, we're at the very start of that um, boom. We're at the very start of that uh, innovative wave at this particular time. Um, so what skills do you need? Put very simply, um, you know, the, the skills that uh, bright young people coming out of high school are already starting to develop are exactly the right skills that you need to build upon and enhance to uh, make a contribution in this field. Um, uh, at this time, you should have such core computing skills as uh, programming uh, capabilities. If you're a good Python programmer, R programmer, or Java programmer, or you know, go about learning that through your, your education and degrees, uh, you will be um, ideally positioned. It's quite a, a technical field at this time, um, although there's various efforts to automate and make certain parts of the processes uh, simpler. Um, data management and data wrangling skills. This is equally important. Um, so, you know, uh, you some will be familiar with the ideas of relational databases and uh, SQL or SQL and other types of data manipulation and other types of applications. So um, these are the, the the kind of primitive uh, starting points. Uh, and in the end, and also as I mentioned here, some certain types of math, uh, linear algebra, discrete math, um, and uh, you know a solid understanding of statistics as well. But uh, you know using those skill sets um, or building from those skill sets is actually what it takes to not just talk about artificial intelligence but to do it and hence to actually be the uh, the people who will, will be able to fill up that jobs boom that I described in one of the earlier slides there just showing the uh, extremely uh, high demand for, for uh, skilled people in these areas. This is the starting point. Uh, students coming out of high school will start to pick up some of these skills or that, that they, they may have had that opportunity. Um, they then have to uh, you know, have, I would say, advanced software skills, um, advanced understanding of various types of machine learning algorithms. Um, I would say they're highly learnable. They're uh, not as um, prohibitive as, as it may, may seem um, and not Overly mathematical, even uh, it is. It is more software oriented. Um, in addition, certain types of methodological skills, some sort of what we might even call research skills, to understand how to correctly apply the underlying technologies, the underlying hardware, in a meaningful way to valuable problems. Okay, so uh, that is um, that is the pathway from from not knowing about this area to being able to be a, a leading, um, you know, potentially a leading innovator or a leading um, participant in, the, in this field. Um, I will keep this part short. There's a, there's a lot of uh, broad and exciting possibilities that we can we can talk about. Where is this? Uh, where are these technologies, you know, impacting just at the moment? But. Uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, around about 2015, various uh, you know artificial intelligence uh, techniques and technologies uh, demonstrated an ability to exceed human computer vision capability, uh, which garnered quite a lot of excitement. So, for example, uh, you know, these uh, these software systems could judge what was in a picture. Uh, for example, the animals, the individual people. Uh, the objects better than a human observer of, of these images or photographs and that suggested to people that this could be going to change um, you know how we do a lot of things 
Um, one of the flow-on applications of that is, of course, autonomous or self self-driving vehicles. So that uh, uh, you know, this, the, these these uh, this particular technology, which has a lot of potential, it's still in its early days. Uh, it, it does rely heavily on computer vision, uh, the ability to real-time processing of uh, of road imagery uh, to detect uh, other objects, other vehicles, other obstacles, any anomalous uh, situations. Another one, natural language processing. Uh, this refers again to uh, using machine learning to, uh, to be able to analyze what someone is speaking about and, and understand the semantics to some extent. Uh, again, this has in recent years have been shown for various test sets and various test bed data sets to exceed human performance, which has caused a lot of excitement as well. Um, these sorts of capabilities are going to uh, you know, make it possible to, um, for example, do real-time translation between languages. So I can speak English and you hear it in Spanish, or you speak Korean to me and I hear English. Uh, so these sorts of applications which are which are you know are basically here at this time and are going to get um, increasingly sophisticated and accurate uh, are going to obviously have a have a, have a wonderful impact um, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to have time in this talk to go into all of the possible applications but suffice to say amazingly um, one of the key implications of the machine learning uh, capabilities, the artificial intelligence capabilities, is the ability to predict the future in limited contexts, in limited problems, uh, and, and those contexts and problems getting increasingly broad and less constrained. Uh, the reason, because uh, the reason is, is because with machine learning uh, you can learn from some historical set of examples where you knew, whether you knew the outcome, you can learn sophisticated ways to um, functions that map from the previous events and information to what then happens. Uh, and so this ability to predict things uh, via machine learning in many application areas are already far exceeds what a human can do. A human can, uh, can uh, ingest a lot of information, use incredibly sophisticated judgment, but uh, sometimes when the set of inputs are thousands or millions, um, a machine, uh, you know, armed with uh, machine learning uh, techniques, can factor in all of that information uh, to make a kind of a sophisticated type of prediction, which is, which is quite new. And without elaborating it here, I think it can be understood that if you can predict the future in limited capacity. Uh, in any given industry or any given context, um, this will be this will be a, a game changer across uh, many many of our activities. Um, and even beyond that, we're seeing interesting developments uh, in what's called uh, generative models and generative adversarial networks at the moment, which actually are leading to the creation of novel, realistic images, videos, and music. We might even call it creativity. So we're seeing the uh, creation of, of new imagery, new videos um, based on uh, generation from many examples of uh, existing um, images or existing videos or music. Um, so it's hinting at this point at uh, almost a revolution in the creative industries as well. So this is very early days. Uh, it's likely to evolve quite strongly. So this is hopefully a little bit of a primer of uh, you know what is happening in this field uh, artificial intelligence is not going to be replacing jobs in fact it's generating the you know the the most uh, exciting uh, well remunerated and impactful jobs in fact in the economy at the moment so you know if you're a, a you know a young person uh, coming out of high school or community college um, you know you would want to study uh, something like computer science or data science, this would be the correct uh, preparation uh, to go into these fields and, and, and have an opportunity to excel in these fields. Um, and uh, if you were uh, later in your career and have already completed your bachelor's degree, 
then a degree such as a, a master in computer science uh, would be an appropriate choice. A particular master of science in computer science um, has a heavy uh, artificial intelligence emphasis, uh, and so uh, you know it is a it is a preparation to uh, to be able to contribute in some of these uh, very high end uh, roles that I've described. So uh, finally, uh, here is my uh, my email address. So uh, where any uh, viewers have questions uh, about what I've described, I'm uh, very interested to discuss these topics. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of need to have uh, young people be aware of these career paths and just how outstanding they are. Um, it, the more smart young people we can have flowing into these fields, it's going to be a, a very great thing. And uh, also looking at how these technologies can be applied into any given industry. Um, in, in the case of each industry, um, it's potentially very tra transformative. So if you're interested in, in forming the new Amazon, or you're wishing to start the new uh, giant social media company, or or maybe even in sectors that, that are that are novel that we haven't even seen past examples of. Um, uh, engaging with the university is uh, is probably a, a very uh, a timely thing to do. Uh, in in any event, where there's any questions, I'm very happy to uh, to, to discuss them. Uh, that has my uh, email address. There is the. Uh, is the best way to reach out to me in the, in the first instance and I'm, I'm also happy to speak obviously via phone or via, via video call uh, if desired. Thank you for listening. <laughs>